Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. This is Michael KE4EST. Excuse the mess here. I have just been going crazy with this project trying to I'll drag this out and drag that out and move this around so I don't really have the I really don't have the desk and the bench cleaned up. But I thought you guys might find this interesting. So what I've been trying to do is well over here where are you there you are where are you kind of hidden there there's that oscilloscope project that I restored and I said I was going to maybe make a curve trace or a signature tracer out of it and you can see in the bottom there right there at the bottom I've added a switch and I've added some banana jacks and I did put a circuit in there. I had another power supply to get me a positive and negative, about 18 volts. And I added a circuit board in there and set it up, and it works okay. But I didn't do a whole lot more with it so far because I've got some other plans you'll see later on. Um, I don't have it even turned on right now. But. Get back here. I kept thinking about this. And I thought, you know, it's neat. It's really neat to take one of these old oscilloscopes and turn them into, you know, like a signature tracer. And you've seen I've done one other one where I showed you I'm making a signature tracer out of it. And it was a solid state. That one there's tube. But take them and you know make them useful again do something because I mean they're good for looking at little small signals and things like that but uh, some of the newer electronics and digital things and whatever they kind of really can't keep up you know or whatever so it's nice to make you know signature tracer out of them or something repurpose them into something you know uh, I mean some of them you know you want to kind of just completely restore it and make a shelf queen out of it stick it on the shelf and say check this out restore this you know whatever but that's you know all neat and everything I uh, had this idea in my head I thought there's got to be a way well I mean of course there is a way it just gotta there's got to be a simple way to make a curve tracer or a signature tracer really I mean, except to make you know major curves on a, like transistor curve you know curved lines going across but uh, a signature tracer to make one without an oscilloscope but use something like you know Arduino or some kind of microcontroller and I've got this here set up using a Teensy it's actually I got the card back here because I got it flipped this way because I got the board it's in here right behind here I'm using Teensy 4.0 or is it a yeah that's the 4.0 I've got a Teensy 4.1 too. I've got some of those, but anyway. So, I kept thinking, I was like, there's got to be a way to sit down and do this. You know, that's what's neat sometimes. Just sit down and design something and do it without, because it's easy to go to the internet and copy somebody else or whatever. And sometimes, you know, I do that. Everybody does that, you know, especially if you're, you know, it's great if you're starting out. You know, sometimes, you know, you don't want to completely reinvent the wheel. You want to go, let's say, I'd kind of like to make this project. You know, whatever it is, Project X. You're going to make it, you know, something that you want to do. Go search the internet, see if you can find somebody else has done it. And say you got some Arduino boards or some sort of uh, microcontroller laying around or something. And you can say, you know what? I'd like to do this. You know, it's neat to make a LED flash and all that, but you know, when you really start learning this stuff and start really keeping it in your brain is when you actually find a project that you want to do. You can do the examples, you can, you know, say you're just first into microcontrollers and you grab a you know a Arduino Uno and follow some examples online or in a book or whatever. And that's good to get your basics down, especially if you're not if you've never done any C programming or anything. But to start learning how it all works. But real quick, it gets boring, and it's like, it ain't really boring, but it's like, eh, I think this is really neat, and all the stuff you can do. I've seen other projects people's done, and, ah, but I flashed LED. I changed the flash rate on it. I 
made it where I can push a button and that LED comes on or whatever and yeah okay this is cool but and it kind of gets pushed off to the side and you're like man this is really neat I see people do all this stuff but how do they just I don't know well you know you lose your enthusiasm you lose even if you're really really into this stuff it's quick it's easy to quickly start going eh you know I just do something else or whatever you gotta find a project fish feeder or you know whatever say you got a fish tank and you want to have an automatic feeder or something set up or you can buy those things of course but make your own or you know, I'm just making something, like something for an example of make you in a temperature uh, display shows indoor and outdoor temperature or something you know with grab you a TFT display and Arduino or some microcontroller I keep saying Arduino because that's the most popular and all people know what I'm talking about but that's you know the, the really neat stuff of it is doing this like this right here grabbing something and saying you know what yeah i do a lot of my thinking when i'm laying in bed at night and it was i was going through my head you know how you can get these things online you can buy these um current and voltage or they'll say uh, iv signature tracers you can get them on ebay you can get find plans for them online to make your own it's got a little oscillator in it and usually some op amps and and to take that and then you can you know feed that into your oscilloscope put it in the xy mode if it's a newer oscilloscope and oh you got your little neat little signature tracer but what if you don't want to use it with an oscilloscope or you don't have an oscilloscope or you don't have a spare oscilloscope or you don't want to You've got an oscilloscope, but you want to use the signature tracer, but you don't have to switch it back and forth, hook the wires up to it, and then, or you want to use it like right now. I'm using this in this circuit. I'm using the oscilloscope right now, and so you don't want to. So, you know, in other words, what I'm trying to say is, make a circuit. I'm sure they they make them commercially. I'm sure you know if you're sitting there thinking this through, we can probably get one somewhere or whatever. There's got to be a way to make one. It may not be the fanciest one. It may not be the perfect one. It may not be calibrated. It may not be great, but good enough just to do some quick little signature tracing. So that's what I did. I got to thinking it through in my head. And I've got this one over here, and I've got in this box that I use. It's got BNC jacks on the back of it. I think I've showed this before. This one right here is... Uh, a Paul Carlson design that's inside of here so I really can't show you that it's a patreon but if you go to his patreon you can uh, get the circuit and everything for it it's a really great oscillator in it and this one it's better than some of the ones you can buy on eBay um, it's got a really smooth sine wave and it, it works really good if you, you can calibrate it and everything um, this is one I've had for a while. I've got it in this box and I can use that. And of course, I've got other little circuit boards I've made and I'll stick in oscilloscopes or something. But this one here, I can use like I've got right now. It's kind of got a lot of light on this, but maybe you can still see that. I've got a capacitor across the leads of it. And if you look at that on the screen, I'll zoom in here in a minute. You can see the voltage back there on the meter. You can see where voltage I'm at. You can watch that circle get smaller as I give it more voltage. And all that. And same way, I'll just uh, let's see. Just like any other, let me zoom in on it now a little bit here. Sorry about the glare. It's just the way I've tried to move everything around a little bit, but I've kind of got stuff you can see here just kind of stuck a certain way and this is you know prototyped up just to see if I can get it like I want it right there maybe yeah you can see if I touch the leads together just like a curve tracer there's some little bit of let me see if I turn this light off uh, maybe a little bit better you can see there's some kind of artifacts there on the screen a little bit to the right there see that Barely showing up here over here on the right hand side. Um, and I'm not sure if I take the voltage all the way down. See, when I take it all the way down, it should be a dot. So I got to do a little bit of. 
a little bit of that's in the hardware here and a little bit's in software i've got to do some cleanup so i just got this going i was just laying in bed thinking about it and i was like it's got to be it and then I was thinking how to go through it and do it in software and how to set this up and feed it into the Teensy. I'm feeding it using two analog inputs. Let me find, here's a, I think this is a 9.1 volt Zener. And you see it still ain't perfect here. Let me start bringing the voltage up. See, there's the first, there's the 0.6 volt right about there. About there's where it starts to take the turn. If I back out, sorry I have to move the camera around so much, but I didn't want to set another camera up just for this quick to show you this. Yeah, about 0 0.6 volts. And then maybe you can see both of those. If I bring this up, I keep bringing it up, and you start to see there's some capacitance in there. It's probably in this, I'm on this breadboard. Let's see if I can get rid of some of that. Not really. See how it's coming down like that. But I just starting to make the turn right there. Kind of see that. Just making the turn. Like nine point. There's nine point four. Back it up. Just make the turn right there. Yep, nine point one. You can probably see that. I'll put you more on the screen there. So you can see how, you know, just a quick, I want to test this nine point, you know, and you can even have it set where you can read the voltage on the screen here. I was messing with that a little bit and I didn't finish it, but or a relative indication of voltage. It don't have to be super perfect. And you can say, yep, okay, I see that. Now this capacitance in here, you wouldn't normally see on a scope and so I've got a little bit, but you can see this mess here. Take all this and put it in a nice little circuit board. It'll take a lot of this extra capacitance out you're seeing. But I just thought I thought that was neat and thought you guys might want to see that. I know I've got, uh, I don't have hundreds of thousands or thousands of subscribers and all that yet, but looking at the Google Analytics for my channel and stuff, I do have a few of you guys out there that watch every video I put out from the start to the end i don't care what it is you watch it so it's neat to have some people that follow you know every little thing i thought i need to start making some videos like this you guys might find it neat instead of just clean everything up nice and neat and showing you here's i'm gonna restore this come back in the next shot and it's restored and what i did and there's the end of it or this or that you know you can let me know in the comments below if you want to see more stuff like this i'm experimenting but i'm just laying in bed and it just it just it's one of those things like a light bulb went off i was like oh because i kept trying to think how am i going to feed you know i know i can feed an analog port but how am i going to make the code work and keep up with everything and do it so that it'll do that you know on the screen there when i put something in or and you see it ain't perfect exactly i got some work done code I'm gonna touch it my hands there that capacitance when I, I'm grabbing in the leads there. And my meter just timed out. But we'll just quickly look over here on the computer and you can see it's just you know the normal stuff here to get the I'm using the RA8875 with a Teensy 4.0 TFT display. And this is not polished code, there's a lot of stuff I've put in taken out um, I don't have a whole lot of you know comments in there right now or anything like I normally would if I was going to you know uh, really show this but instead of having everything polished up and you can see where I've had some serial prints just to see what's going on then I took them back out um, and this is just right in one thing there there's not a whole lot of stuff going on with um even got functions set up i just threw it all in one loop right now because i usually don't like showing stuff like this because <laughs> i like to get it get get it working and clean it up you know but you can see the code what i've done here the main part of the code is right here 
and I'm going 800 because this is a 800 by 600 display in this for loop and it's grabbing the input X on the analog one input and right now I've got it set for just 0 to you know 10 bits 0 to 10 23 I had it set up at 12 bits but I was just experimenting with that um, but it grabs that and depends on if it's high or low because I've got two resistors you know coming together uh, two 10k resistors one going to the positive rail and one to the ground and then off of that I'm feeding that you know at the analog input and then feeding a signal of that that gives me you know raises my ground up above ground so I can look at negative signals you know like sine wave or whatever and so there you go there's that and then the Y values are coming in and then it's going to clear out the old this all this is doing right here is taking the clearing the old dots out so you don't have a bunch of dots on top of each other you know you got to clear out the old stuff as it zips through the loop and then it prints the new and then it down here is just saving that what, what this was to the old one so when it comes back around it'll clear off that you know it says in black here and that's all it is right there I mean, there's just more junk down there and then it ain't doing anything and that's just the code that's it um, it needs a whole lot more to it and needs to be some clean up and whatever but just that and I've got it working so you know um, it's pretty neat I just thought, hey you know I think I can do this and then it hit me oh I know exactly what to do I just need to grab you know set it up so I can get positive and negative going in I've got to keep everything above you know from 0 to 3.3 volts I can't go above that because it's you know it's a teensy and a teensy 4.0 and it's 3.3 .3 volt but um, anyway so there's that I don't know did I bore you to death did you like it let me know give me a like and I'll catch you in the next video the next video will probably be um this here i've been working on right here probably that be the next video right there um i've already went through and did the first part of the video where i you can see the cases off of it where we looked at it and then i'm going to restore this capacitor checker so that's coming up i'm not going to say it's the next video but it probably is most likely is but that just happens to be on the bench there and then i thought wait a minute so I grabbed this over here and I grabbed this and I grabbed all this and started you know going through stuff and everything's a mess but anyway until the next video this is Michael K4EST 73